All right, let's take some time now to look at major seven chords from the sixth string in all their inversions. Root position, first, second, and third inversion. All right, and I'll explain a little bit uh, about what that means. First, let's take the chord that you probably already know, <coughs> which is the G major seven chord uh, from the root position sixth string. Third fret on the low E, then we're skipping the A string. Third finger comes down fourth fret D, fourth finger behind it on the fourth fret B, uh, G, and then second finger comes down on the third fret B string. So chord you already know, this is the major seven shape when your root note's on the sixth string. We happen to be playing it from the third fret, so that means that it's G major seven. So because G is our root, we're playing a G major seven chord, and G is also the lowest note in our sequence here. That means we're in root position. So in this case, the root note and the bass note, the bass note being the lowest note, are the same. So it's a root position chord. Now what an inversion is, is when you take those notes, right, in a G major seven chord, for example, we have four notes. We have a G, the root, B, which is the third, D, which is the fifth, and F sharp, which is the seventh. So whatever note we put on the bottom is going to change the inversion of the chord. Whatever note we put in the bass, right, the lowest note, is going to change the sound of the chord even though it's still a G major 7 chord. So like I said, when G is, it, is the bass note in a G major 7 chord, we say it's root position, which is the case right here. Now if we wanted to play in first inversion, first inversion is when you take the third degree of the chord and you put that in the bass. So you take the third of the chord, which in this case is the note B, and you put it in the bass, meaning make it the lowest note. Okay, and so that shape is this. So this is also a G major seven shape, or a G major seven chord, but it's first inversion because we have B in the bass. All the same notes are there, B, G, D, and F sharp, but it's in a different order. So check out this. This is our second finger on the seventh fret, low E, um, <clears throat> which is B. Then we're going to skip the A string and our first finger comes down here on the fifth fret D. That is our root note. Then our third finger comes down here on the seventh fret G and our pinky falls behind it on the seventh fret B. That's our seven. So now we have a first inversion G major seven chord. So root position, first inversion. Okay both sound good. Now the second inversion is when we take the fifth of the chord and put that in the bass. So the fifth of a G major seven chord is the note D. So we find D on the low E string, which happens to be the 10th fret, and we're going to put our third finger there. This shape is uh, kind of tricky at first, but once you develop the muscle memory, it's kind of easy and uh, sounds super good. I like it not as much for strumming, but more for like maybe a finger picking. Uh, or just a sparse kind of sound if you have delay or something else going on your guitar. Anyway, <clears throat> third finger, 10th fret, low E, that's D, that's our fifth. Then our second, we're gonna skip the A string again. Second finger comes down to the ninth fret on the D string, that's B, which is our third. Then pinky comes down and hits the 11th fret on the G, that's F sharp, our, our seven. And our first finger comes down here on the eighth fret, B string, <clears throat> sorry, eighth fret B string, and uh, that's our chord, our G major seven chord. So one note at a time. So you hear all the tensions, and there's the G major seven chord. Once again, same chord, different inversion. This is second inversion because the fifth of the chord, in this case D, is in the bass, played as our lowest note. Okay, now third inversion is when you take the seventh of the chord and you play that in the bass. So uh, the seventh of a G major seven chord is F sharp. Uh, if you know your key signatures, you know that the key of G major has one sharp in it, which is F sharp. So if you count up G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, seven. Uh, we're gonna put that in the bass. So that's the 14th fret on the, uh, on the low E string. This one kind of sounds funky. It's funny how the more you mix up the notes, like sometimes you'll get a really clean and good sound and sometimes the all the notes are really close in intervals next to each other so it, it sounds more dissonant uh, like you'll see with this chord but third finger 14th fret low E that's our F sharp then we're gonna just kind of bar across the 12th fret on the D G and B strings 
because that's like our G major chord right there. And we just add the seventh in. See how the tension's kind of close? So that's a third inversion G major seven chord. Now let's go through those real quick. G major seven root position. G major seven first inversion, which is B in the bass. G major seven second inversion with the fifth in the bass, D. And G major seven uh, third inversion with the seventh in the bass. So kind of make up, you know, a, a chord progression using different inversions of this chord and see where it lend, um, takes you. Because like I said, maybe this G major seven chord here and the first inversion, they're very like jazzy sounding where you can. But something like this, the second inversion chord here, I, like I said, I like to hear it as like a finger plucked kind of. the notes are so close in intervals it has a different sound to it and then here you you know get creative and see like I said where the sound uh, makes you want to go so let's do it one more time in a different key so you can kind of see where these root notes actually are and also get these shapes down let's do it in the key of C okay so C major 7 you're going to go there, root position, meaning C is in the bass, and C is the eighth fret on the low E string. So we're going to play that same shape here. Eight on the low E, then you're going to skip the A string, and you're going to play third finger, ninth fret D, fourth finger, ninth fret G, second finger comes down, eighth fret on the B. So there's our root position C major 7 chord. Now the notes in a C major 7 chord are um, the 1st, 3rd, 5th, and 7th, and luckily in the key of C there's no sharps or flats, so it's super easy. C is our 1, C, D, E is our 3, C, D, E, F, G is our 5, and C, D, E, F, G, A, B, B is our 7. Okay, so root position, C major 7. Then we go here to 1st inversion, which means we put the 3rd in the bass, which means, in this case, E. So we find E on the low E, which is the 12th fret, and we do that shape here, where our second finger is hitting the 12th fret on the low E. We're skipping the A string, first finger 10th fret D, third finger 12th fret uh, G, and fourth finger 12th fret B. So that's our G major seven, or sorry, C major seven first inversion. Our root note is here on the D string, but E is in the bass, which is the third, making it a first inversion chord. Okay, now we want to go to second inversion, which means we have to put the fifth of the chord in the bass. So count up, C, D, E, F, G, G is our fifth, and we do that shape that we were doing before, which is our second inversion shape. Third finger, third fret, low E, skip the A string, of course. Second finger, second fret, D string. Fourth finger, fourth fret, G string, and first finger, first fret, B string. You know, up higher on the neck, this chord's easier to play. Here, you gotta get a little more of a stretch. So, take your time. Make sure all the notes are uh, out clean. You can actually hit the high E in here as well, as if you wanted. Nice sounding chord. So that's a uh, second inversion G major 7 chord. Sorry. Second inversion, C major 7 chord, G is in the bass. You know what I mean. Now let's go up to that third inversion, which is um, with B in the bass, the seventh degree, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. B is the seventh. And then we do that shape here where a third finger hits the seventh fret low E, and then our first finger bars across the D, G, and B strings. Sounds a little better down here, I think. So this is a third inversion C major 7 chord. And your root note here is on the G string. So real quick, let's go through those again, and let me show you where the root note is in each of these chords. Remember, the root note is the actual chord that we're playing. So we did two examples here, one in the key of G, one in the key of C. So the, the root note is always 
G or always C in those two contexts. But the bass note is what changes and that's where the inversions come through. So in your root position chord, C major seven here on the eighth fret, of course C is our bass note, our lowest note because it's root position. Then you come up to the first inversion where we have E in the bass. You want to know that your, your root note is on the D string here, the C, 10th fret here. That's where your root note's hidden. And you come down to second inversion with G in the bass, and your root note is on the B string, is that note. And then you come here to third inversion, and your root note is on the G string. So here's those shapes again. So maybe uh, play through these a couple times to where you have the shapes kind of dialed in and you know where the root notes are. And then uh, quiz yourself, you know, if you know the key signatures, pick a, uh, a different chord, maybe a D chord or an A chord, major seven, and see if you can find all the inversions of uh, a D major seven or an A major seven. First root position, first inversion, second inversion, and third inversion. So good practice. Um, it'll help you to learn the fretboard. Uh, amongst other things. So really valuable stuff and uh, get creative and see what you can come up with using these new fancy chords. <laughs>